Awesome. Well, thanks, Ben, for coming on um, the show today. Real quick, everybody, this is Ben Libby. Um, ben, feel free to introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and, and graphics formations. Uh, so my name is Ben Libby. Um, I live in Cedar Rapids. Um, I own a business called Graphic Formation Films. Um, and I'd say 90% of my business is weddings, maybe more. For weddings, I don't know. I feel like weddings are just a little bit different. But, um, yeah, I've been doing that for about two and a half years. And um, May is when I went full-time with weddings. So, so, yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on. Can you share with us a little bit about what you did before you started shooting weddings and kind of how that process worked to get to where you're at now? Because how many weddings do you guys usually shoot in a year? Right now, it's, we're averaging around 30 weddings. Um, I think we have like 21 booked for next year, so we'll see what happens. We may get some more. Um, but so two years ago, I was working – for a company called Acumol, that's a man- manufacturing company in Des Moines, um, and uh, they sent me to school, so they paid for my schooling. But while I was going to school there, I had someone, a family friend, that wanted us to film their wedding. We had just bought a drone, um, just became certified as a Part 107 pilot, and um, so we're like, "Yeah, we'll go fly, we'll go get some shots." So I used an iPhone and a drone, and filmed the wedding at. Um, it's a wedding venue in Des Moines. Uh, it's like a, it's over by the airport. I don't know what, uh, it doesn't matter. It's a super like classic building, but I filmed like 90% of it with my drone and like 10% with my phone. <laughs> um, but after doing that one wedding, then I just, uh, I kind of thought, man, I really enjoyed doing this. So, um, that's why I invested in some equipment. I think I had like two cameras. Uh, it's like the bare minimum for to film a wedding. I had like one piece of audio equipment, um, some tripods, and like two or three lenses. Um, and yeah, we I think we started by offering a couple free weddings, and it just kind of took off from there. And then we just slowly, as we film a wedding, we'll get maybe another piece of gear, um, and then that's kind of how we built our full set right now but we shoot on but yeah and you, and you say we is it is you and your wife or do you have another person that you work with yeah it's usually me and my wife but uh, my wife also has a full-time job as a physical therapist so sometimes she doesn't want to take a weekend away working so um sometimes i have other people that will help shoot me shoot with me and they like know my style and how i like to film things so yeah that's really cool. So you said you worked at AccuMold. Were you like a tool and die type guy or were you doing something else? I was doing uh, automation and robotics. Uh, pretty much so, te- it was pretty much like tech support for um, – all we had to do is pretty much keep production running. So we had to fix stuff that was broken and stuff like that. That's really cool. So at what point were you – I mean, you're shooting a couple of weddings here and there. At what point did the the switch flip for you that – you know, I don't have to do what I'm doing now. Like I could pursue this full time and, and really like, what was that turning point for you in that process? Um, so, I mean, working for AccuMold, I was like going to work and then coming home. As soon as I got home, I was just editing. Um, and it just got to the point where I was like, I literally had no time for anything other than editing or work. I was doing like a lot of my business at, at AccuMold. Like I was, responding to clients and stuff at AccuMold, doing like posts on social media. Um, and then I think I got to a point where I was making just about as much as I was making at AccuMold. And so that's when I started considering, okay, could I do this full time? And then we, I knew I was moving from Des Moines to Cedar Rapids in May. So I was like, okay, I'll just make that my, when I go full time. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I don't, it wasn't necessarily ideal that there was a pandemic going on and I was going full time, but I feel like we've stayed afloat. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Cause I mean, I was, I, and I told you this before we hopped on, like I was looking at some of your work and just the quality with the sound design, the color, and your like storytelling, the audio, like everything just super top notch. And I, I honestly think you're probably like your team is the best in 
in Iowa at what you guys do. Cause maybe talk a little bit about like how you have improved over time. Cause you've only been doing this a couple of years. Where did you learn your technical skills? And like, how have you constantly gotten improvement over and over and over to get to the point where you're at now, where you're kind of more of that premier level, um, higher quality, higher price tag, uh, service for this type of thing. Um, well, first it kind of started with YouTube, just watching a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, and then eventually I saw an ad for a course, kind of like what you have. Um, and that was probably one of the best uh, investments I made for my business was just investing in myself in like education and stuff like that. Um, was it full-time filmmaker or was it something? Yeah, full, okay. yeah full-time yeah. filmmaker. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I haven't even like, I've only scraped like the main topics. Like I haven't even do- dove into like the corporate stuff. and. Um, I, cause my main focus is like weddings. Um, but, um, I feel like I got to a point now where like, I don't really have to rely quite so much on that course now that I've like reviewed it so many times. Now it's more just like tweaking things as I, every wedding I shoot, I'll like send a video to other videographer friends and I'll be like, Hey, can you give me some feedback on this? And I have a, I have like a group chats that I like trust them to give me like actual criticism and not like butter me up. Um, so that's very handy to have uh, someone that can give you honest feedback. Um, even though sometimes it can hurt. Um, it's nice to have that feedback system that you can trust. But yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about that how that looks like on a wedding day you said you always shoot with somebody else maybe walk us through what that looks like um yeah how many people are on on a crew do you have like a shot list like what does that look like so you just want me to go through like a typical typical day yeah like a typical wedding day like how many of there are how many of you are there and kind of uh what that looks like so if i if it's if it's not my wife helping me then the, usually i'll have the second shooter come with me like in the morning and I actually start at sunrise. Like I know, I know not everybody believes you need to do that. Like you start at 10 AM, but I have this, I have this system where it, that allows me to get kind of into this creative flow where I start with like plenty of time. Like I'm not in any rush. I start with drone shots and I just get like a ton of establishing shots. Cause I know usually when I start with drone shots, I'm probably not going to use the first couple shots I take. So that kind of allows me to get into my creative flow. Um, And then I'll go and um, me and my second shooter, we'll get some like establishing shots of like the building. Then we usually will go and meet the bride and bridesmaids, um, introduce ourselves kind of so they can put a name to the face. So they're not just like, hey, dude, later in the day, like they can't remember our name. We want them to remember our names. Um, And then we'll kind of start doing detail shots also to kind of improve our creativity, just kind of get going a little bit and get our minds working. Um, and then I feel like once we get like the detail shots of the rings and stuff, that's when we go, we're like full board, like, okay, now we're, now we're preserving memories. So like we're capturing the girls, like interacting with each other. Um, sometimes we'll go and see what the groom groomsmen are doing. Um, and it's a lot of just kind of like standing back and trying to capture stuff. Then we kind of go with the photographer, like how they like to capture like the mom zipping up the dress. Um, just kind of standard stuff that you see in wedding videos. Sure, sure. Because um, how, how important is it working with a photographer? Because I know personally when I shoot weddings like that, if you have a terrible photographer to work with, it just makes the whole day really drag. What's What's been your experience with working with photographers? I've only... Um, I've only had like one, maybe like bad experience. Um, and luckily I get to work with him again, <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> um, but, um, I, I found that like, if I reach, so I reach out to all the other vendors prior to the wedding, um, just to kind of build a connection. And I feel like, uh, making an effort to show like, Hey, I'm ready to be on the same team as you. That kind of gets them it's more likely for them. I feel like to refer us on if we had a good experience at the wedding, but I feel like it starts with making that connection early on. So like I've already reached out to a couple of photographers that I'm filming that I'm working with next year. 
Um, typically, I'd say I'm usually messaging them the week of the wedding, being like, hey, I'm looking forward to working with you. I maybe make a short compliment on their work. I'll be like, oh, I love how you shoot. I love the light and airy style. And, um, they feel so genuine, kind of butter them up a little bit. Um, sure. Do you but, feel like that actually ends up, like you said, giving you more referral work just from those vendors just by doing that small little piece or does it just, yeah, kind of like I mean, just recently I booked a couple that had never heard of me, but the photographer said like, you have to get this person. Um, and then they reached out to me and booked me that like same day. Um, but yeah, definitely trying to connect with the other vendors, especially the photographer. Um, so like, and along those lines too, I try to actually capture some like behind the scenes of the photographer. I mean, it's super easy to just like hit record or take a photo of the photographer and put them in your story and tag them. Um, they love that kind of stuff. Cause I mean, they, they're sitting around taking photos all day and they don't usually, not all photographers have a second shooter to like take behind the scenes photos and stuff. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. And then, and then in terms of like having a second shooter, what is that? free you up to do by having that second person? Like what, why is that a good value to you to have a second person on, on the shoot with you? Um, for me, it allows me to, well, first, first it allows me to like bounce ideas back and forth. Like I can be like, Hey man, so like, what can I do with this? Uh, what do you think I should do with this next shot? Or what do you think of this idea? And so like sometimes when you get in this mindset, so like when I help other people, when I'm second shooting for other people, I feel like I have, less responsibility about like what's going on like the main shooter is usually the one that's like okay we need to be here at this time so like i'm focused on capturing the stuff that you have to see you have to see the mom um you have to see like the mom bringing up the dress or helping her get the dress on um you have to get the first look i'm like focused on making sure i capture the most important things so like my mind is not always thinking of the creative shots the creative stuff so when we all of a sudden we're like switching to portraits and i'm like oh crap like okay what are some poses and i'll like run to my second shooter and be like hey just spit me some ideas and then i'll like kind of think about it it kind of takes the weight off of trying to be creative and like know where you're supposed to be and when um so that's one huge thing is just having that creative communication with each other. Um, then also being like, if it's before the ceremony and I know like I need to get a couple more shots of something, I'll be like, Hey, can you go set up these tripods? Um, and he like, will get all the cameras matching um, and get stuff like that. Or like if he's waiting around, I'll be like, Hey, can you just like get some shots of grandparents, people sitting down in their pews, stuff like that. Um, so it's super nice to have that backup stuff. And then the backup, like having more than one angle to work with for like a first look, knowing, knowing that you, you're, you have another angle to work with. Um, it's just a lifesaver because something could happen. They could turn around the wrong way and you don't get their faces. Um, so yeah, having that angle is huge. And like, when you're during the ceremony, the most stressful part, having knowing that there's somebody that's like trying to capture the groom's face, you can like focus on other things. You don't have to worry about that. Um, so Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think it's interesting too because I've only shot wedding videos by myself. I think I've shot like I was counting like just to even know like the last three years. I think it's like seventy five weddings or something like that. And I, I can't imagine like how awesome that would be just to have a second to be like, Hey, get this other angle or whatever. Cause a lot of times it's, you know, and I've, I've had my plenty, my fair share of having, uh, you know, you have the groom locked off on a tripod for his reaction and then people all stand up right in front of your camera or it's exactly. like focus and it's like, Oh shit, now I can't use that camera angle or whatever. So I'm sure that does add the extra element of help to it. Yeah. And then like after the ceremony being able to be like, Hey, can you, like they're literally leaving right now. I need to go with them on this party bus. Can you like get everything in the car and take it to the reception and maybe start getting some like detail shots and I'll meet you there. Like that's super nice. Um, because getting like detail shots at the reception um, can be tricky because sometimes they, right when they get there, they're entering and you got to, you still got to deal with like lights, the audio from the DJ. Um, so yeah, having that being like, hey, can you talk to the DJ for me? Um, just kind of get a connection built. Um, 
So yeah, Absolutely. I've honestly I've only filmed like maybe one or two weddings by myself, um, because of like emergency situa- situations. And I mean, everything still worked out, but like the stress of filming it by myself made me consider like if I had to do 10 of these in a row, I would probably stop filming weddings. Sure. Sure. So it adds that extra layer of happiness to your, like to how you do it. If you have other people help you. And I, I mean, I recommend finding shooters that are not necessarily doing it, um, for the money, but doing it because they love doing it. Um, I fortunately have people that I can call, um, that will come without, I mean, they're like, Oh dude, this is gonna be so much fun. I'll wake up with you at sunrise and stay with you until we leave at nine or 10 PM or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. What's, um, what's one of the coolest things that you've seen at some of these weddings that you've gotten to capture like a special event or like a dance, like choreographed dance or like some kind of super emotional one. Is there anything like in the last year that's really stuck out to you is like, this wedding was like a blast to shoot or this one had like a really cool experience that was unique. Um, see a lot of the Iowa weddings kind of mesh together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, do, I do you go that. outside of the state then, or do you just shoot here in uh, Iowa? Most of it is from here in Iowa. Um, I have yet to like, so the weddings that I've had out of state, we pretty much broke even with like they paid for our stay and travel and everything. So we didn't really profit from them. They were still really fun weddings. Um, I would say, I mean, I did a wedding in South Carolina and everyone at the wedding was from like an acting school. Um, so like everything was so well-spoken. They like took their time with their vows. Um, and then when the dancing started, I've never seen dancing quite like this. And the DJ didn't even have like lights or anything. He just had like a speaker and a turntable. And this was, this was unlike any DJ I've ever worked with. Like he actually, he knew how to mix music and stuff, which you don't see that in Iowa. Unfortunately, there's only a couple people that can do that. Um, but yeah, the dancing was nonstop. And, um, I felt like everybody was on the dance floor. Um, But I think my most memorable one was we were supposed to go to St. Lucia and to film a wedding and that got canceled because of COVID. But the couple, we had like convinced the couple that we were worth every penny. So we weren't going to profit from this wedding at all. But after um, convincing them of our worth, they're like, we'll pay for you to come film our wedding, um, whatever, whatever it takes. So I ended up profiting like $3,000 from them. Um, and it just felt very like real like they wanted the wedding video not because of a cool wedding video but they wanted it because they wanted to preserve these memories um so you could just feel that at at the wedding um everything was very genuine it didn't feel staged um and it was like a super small wedding like 20 people but we got to coordinate like when they did their speeches when they did their first dance when the ceremony started. So it felt really nice to be able to kind of control that stuff and just kind of see it come to life um, right in front of us as we were recording it. That's awesome. Yeah. I know my wedding was supposed to happen on the beach in Florida in April. And then of course COVID ruined it. So Um, we had, we had hired a guy cause it, to to get our videographer that took the longest. It took me three months to figure out who I wanted to shoot my wedding. I can't imagine how hard that'd be. (laughs) Yeah. Cause like all my friends were like, Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. And it's like, I'm like not trying to be rude, but like, you're not good enough. You know, like I want somebody like really good. And then we had it down between two people and we ended up booking a guy called Brandon Rice and he's out of Tennessee. I've watched your wedding video, Brandon. Yeah. He's, I watched that video too. Emerald Hills. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was really cool. Yeah. So we, we didn't do the beach wedding cause he was just going to drive it from Nashville. It's like a, you know, five hour drive or whatever but he ended up just driving from Nashville to Iowa, like a 12 hour drive. Just, you know. really I saw him post and I'm like, that venue looks so nice. Like it looks yeah. like I've seen that before. <laughs> Super dope area. Yeah. We, we really had a good time cause we were going to have the ceremony on the beach and then the reception a week later at that venue at the Emerald Hills. But, um, 
kind of an interesting way too because he's a solo guy but he i think he brought seven cameras with him when he shot mm. at my wedding so he had like time-lapse cameras going on the ceremony area and he had time lapses going here and he'd have the ceremony had like 40 different angles you know it, it was kind of crazy so That's really cool. yeah. yeah so he's a cool guy i know just in some of the ones that i've found too it's it's the unique style or the feel you know like you said you you preserve those memories or the moments and i think that's really the it factor that makes people from like a mediocre videographer to like somebody that you'd be willing to pay you know double or triple the amount for just to have them so yeah yeah those are the kind of clients i want to book too i want clients to be like we don't care how much it costs. Like, how can we, like, what dates are you available? We'll book our, we'll set our venue. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah. Those are the, those seem to be the most special weddings. Absolutely. So where do you think is the main way you're getting new clients in? Cause I know a lot of people are curious, how do you get new clients? Is it all referral? Like maybe walk us through how you're, how people are finding you and you're getting new clients each year. I mean, I st- we started our business shooting three weddings for free, which I could have done probably one wedding for free because after like we posted that first one and we booked up so fast, like we got weddings every weekend to like December. And by the time, I mean, I'm still um, beating myself up for how low I charge myself because like I still filmed. So my prices are at $4,500 for like the base. And I, I mean, I still filmed a wedding this year for $900 because they booked me so long ago. <laughs> um, so like, I'm still hurting because of that. So like definitely understand your value um, because I was undercharging for way too long. Sure. What, what was your point where you're like, we should really start getting up over 2000, 3000, $4,000. What was that? point were you looking at other people in the state in the region and their quality or were you just talking to other people and realized like oh this guy charges three grand and we have better quality like subjectively what was kind of your process and getting your pricing to where it is because i'm sure you probably have a lot of people say that's way too much for them or whatever but i mean i spent like almost six grand on my video so i can say that so (laughs) um um, there's times honestly though where i feel like i could charge more um just for how much work is actually put into it. But um, I, I know I had a few people reach out to me, a couple other videographers, and they're like, dude, you're like taking all my clients. You need to raise your prices. Um, so like I was hurting the industry because my prices were so low. Um, and so people are like, oh, dude, I can get this awesome video for $900. Um, and then um, – yeah, just seeing like other videographers in Iowa. I mean, there's not in Iowa, there's not a ton of wedding videographers. And if there are, they're kind of like novice. They're just kind of, they've only filmed like less than 10 maybe. Um, so they don't really know how much they can charge. Um, but yeah, kind of seeing other people's work kind of made me realize like I should probably raise my prices. Sure, um, sure. Do you find with, with going with higher end, do you have a certain type of client now? Is it like people that are wealthier or their parents are paying for everything or like what type of clients are you attracting by having those higher end um, video clients? Um, I would say it's usually the people I'm finding a lot more times where like they'll reach out to me and they're like, Hey, we want to book you for this date but we're, we we got to check with the venue to see if they're available this day. So it's usually the clients that are like, they have seen my work and they're like, <laughs> as they're like getting proposed to, they're like, hold on, I'm going to message. Ben <laughs> <if he's available." laughs> no, I mean, it's usually the clients that like they'll book their venue and then they're like booking me shortly after just cause they've like seen the videos that, and they're just, they love the style. Um, but um, there's a few other videographers in Iowa that um, charge about the same that I do. Um, so it's kind of, I mean, we compete with each other a little bit, but. Um, sure. When I know when I, when I first got into weddings personally, I was at a, at one of my friend's weddings out in West, Western Iowa in the boonies. And there was a guy that shot their wedding literally on an iPhone eight with a little, with a gimbal. Cause it was like, Oh, it does 4k. 
And then I asked the couple, I said, well, what, what did he charge you? He was shooting, shooting half the reception on an iPhone and like, Oh, it was like $3,000. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like I, if he can get away with this and I actually have legit gear and like all this other stuff, not that the gear is everything, but it's like, you start to realize, okay, it's, it's supply and demand, like you said. Um, and that kind of adds to it anyway, in terms of like who you can shoot with and whatnot. So yeah, it's really cool. So for, for people that are like wanting to get into weddings, what would be like your biggest advice for people that are maybe they're shooting other industries or they're trying to pick an industry or they want to get into weddings? What would be your, your advice to those people? Um, so I look at as, so like I haven't really dove much into corporate work. I've only done, I've only dabbled in it a little bit, but the thing that I love about weddings is knowing that like I'm making something that is going to live on for generations. Like in hopefully in 50 years there, these couples are still like, Hey, here's my wedding video and their grandkids are watching it. Um, so just knowing that I'm making something that's going to live on for a long time rather than like, I don't know how long corporate work stays in the archives, but um, I look at it as more like, with both situations, you're like for corporate work, you're creating art for entertainment kind of, I guess, I don't know if it'd be entertainment. Um, you're like making art for like the present where like with weddings, you're making art for like the future. Um, so yeah. Um, and also, I mean, you really have to enjoy it. Like, I mean, I, I, when I'm sitting through like a ceremony or toast and I feel like I can really connect with the, um, with the people that are giving speeches and stuff, if they're like telling really emotional, I feel like I can like feel that. Um, and having a second shooter, I feel like it's huge because it's just a lot more enjoyable to have somebody that you're comfortable with, like at the wedding with you. Um, I do a ton of behind the scenes stuff. Like we'll get up and take silly photos in the morning um, and tag the couple in it just to show them like we're super excited to be here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I feel like the connections that I've made in weddings has been really big. Um, but yeah. For sure. Do you feel like weddings will be your forever thing or what, what's kind of on the horizon for you guys as you continue to grow and, and book more and do all the different things you're doing? Yeah. Weddings is, I feel like I'll be in weddings for a while. Um, I think I'm, I'm trying to raise the market here in Iowa a little bit. Like I, I feel like I've hit a wall, but I don't know if it's a wall or if it's just like, maybe I'm on the very high end of like the lower budget, like couples where like, if I went up just a little bit more, maybe I would book more higher end luxury weddings because I feel like the weddings I'm filming there. I mean, yeah, they're nice. But like, I still have only filmed a couple weddings with wedding planners. And right. I feel like if there's a wedding planner involved, it's usually a higher end wedding. Um, so I'm, I'm surprised by the fact that I've only filmed a couple weddings where there's been wedding planners. Sure. Um, well, and if you can connect with those planners and, you know, get in their heads with, if they're at, like, their brides are asking, oh, who, who can we do for video? Like, like you said, you can kind of build in those relationships with people and future proof yourself a little bit. Um, I was, I was shooting one that was a really high end, uh, Jewish wedding, my first Jewish wedding a couple weeks ago and they were from out of town and I was literally shooting all this video, watching the guests come in and all the guests there were millionaires cause they're all from Des Moines. Like the former CEO of Meredith corporation walked in. I'm like, that dude's like a billionaire with a B. I'm like, this is crazy. It's like, and they, they all know each other and they talk to each other. It's just, it's crazy what you can do if you just can peel one or two new clients from those ones. Cause the, you'll just continue to shoot videos for all that, those people in that friend group. So. Yeah, that's huge. Um, you never know who's going to be at these weddings too. Um, and for me, I feel like not everyone believes in this. Um, and I might change this, but right now I post like every video I I like make, um, even if it's not one I'm super proud of, but like I tag the couple and then those, um, then the couple shares that video, all her friends and family see it. And then that's how I get business. So usually as I post a video, that's usually when I, my, um, like website activity increases. 
and stuff like that. Um, I might change that though to the point where like I only start sharing the videos that like of the weddings that I want to film. So like the last year I felt like I filmed a ton of Catholic weddings and I want to like kind of get out of that. Sure. Um, I'd rather have like these venue weddings and or these like backyard weddings, stuff like that. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I know there's one that I shot three years ago in one town at this Catholic church in a reception venue. And from that wedding, I booked another one for the next year and then the next year and then the next year. So I have four weddings that are in the exact same venues, same church, same pastor, same everything. And it's like cookie cutter at some point because there's only so much you can do with those yeah. same, the exact same day, basically three times in a row. So I completely get that. Yeah, in August, I had three weeks where I had a wedding at Ashton Hill Farm every week. And so like going to those weddings was pretty tricky because I had to, I had to like get enough drone footage that didn't look the same. Like it had to all look so different um, and trying to film it in a way that didn't feel like every video was the same. Sure. Um, sure. I also feel like sneak peeks are huge. Like I honestly feel like I get more business from my sneak peeks than I do my actual highlights. And it's usually because it, it like the sneak peeks will can retain more attention for people that don't know the couple. Um, so for people that don't know what that is, can you just say like, what is a sneak peek and when do you release it in terms of after the wedding's over? So me personally, I want to try to be the first thing that the couple shares from their wedding. So I go home the day after the wedding and I, um, this year has been different than the previous year. Like I don't dump footage until the morning, um, dump all the footage and then I'll throw together this like minute and a half uh like teaser sometimes it's longer sometimes it's shorter i used to make these like very long but now i'm trying to cut it back so i can save more content for the highlight um but yeah it's pretty much just like like i i don't even hardly ever include like vows or dialogue sometimes it's just like a really cool song with like some of my favorite shots from the wedding like i'm i'm making the sneak peek not for i mean yes for the couple but the sneak peek is for my next couple to see that I want to book. It's so more I'm of a marketing make piece. Coolest right? shot, yeah, the coolest shots, most eye-catching stuff. Whereas the highlight is more storytelling, the dialogue of the day. Sure. Um, I'll tell you what though, man, I, I never did sneak peek teasers until I think last year I did one because I got back from a wedding and like you said, you connected with it. And I felt, and the couple was very attractive. They had a cool venue. There's a bunch of like super emotional things that happened. And I was like moved by this wedding, right? Yeah. And I went home that night, offloaded all my footage. I woke up at like five in the morning the next Sunday or that, you know, the day after. And I just knocked a, high, a teaser out and like in the middle of the day. And I think I got like four new weddings from that. Just because like you said, the couple hadn't even woken up from the night of craziness. And they already had like a teaser to show. Like it just kind of goes to show the, the turnaround time, the professionalism, those types of things too. So. Yeah. That sneak peek. I usually, my goal is usually to try to beat the photographer. Um, just cause like photographers have the ability to just, I mean, they're dumping photos onto a thing and then they, they probably know this is, these are the five photos I'm going to share. Like they know in their head, like I have these five photos, whereas the video, we kind of got to throw it together. Like we got to, kind of tell a small story in a video. Um, but I think the sneak peeks are probably what get me the most business. Um, Absolutely. And Do sometimes... You... Nope, go ahead. Sometimes on the couple's anniversaries, sometimes the couples will share the sneak peek just because they know from the previous year that it got more traction than their highlight did. Um, and it's mostly because, like, the highlight, people aren't going to want to sit through, like, this couple's vows and... Um, the stuff that they don't really connect with. Um, sure. Now I will say I'm trying to like make it more engaging. I'm trying to get a little more retention on my highlights. Um, but that's just something I try to continue to get better at. Um, that's awesome. But yeah. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to share like tips for people that are just getting into this or things that you've learned that have been like important? Like you said, second shooters are big. Um, sharing those teasers are, that's a great tip for people like to kind of think beyond getting the new, the next new couple and that type of thing. But do you have the couple like in your contract, do you require them to share it on their page or do you have to post it first and then they reshare it? Or how do you typically go about that? Cause it sounds like 
Facebook is your main marketing tool to get people to come to your site and inquire on your form and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I don't require them to share it. Um, I feel fortunate enough that most of the time they want to share it, but I mean, I, I do try to educate them a little bit on like the algorithms of the different social media sites. Like, I mean, as cool as it is to get YouTube views and stuff like Facebook is going to push a Facebook video more than a YouTube video. So like rather than having them share the YouTube link, I'll upload a face of a version that I exported so that it looks the best on Facebook. I'll upload that version and them sharing that will get me more traction than if it was a YouTube video. Uh, Because I know when you click on a YouTube link, it like opens up the Facebook browser and it's just, it's just a hassle. Um, well, then it, it reflects negatively on your work because now, now you're associated with a pain in the ass hassle that you got to click and go and watch this, and then you know it just kind of annoys people. So I get that completely. Um, with Instagram, I usually will send them the Instagram version over WeTransfer. Like I'll come make a exported version for Instagram, and I'll send them because they're them posting the video will get more traction than if I post it and tag them. Um, so. Um, that's That's another tip I found, um, with traction, at least for getting the most eyes on your work. Um, I think going to every wedding kind of, uh, with a mindset, like how can I make this one unique to the couple? Um, I usually try to go to weddings with like a song idea in mind. Like I'll, I connect, I like video chat with the couple at least twice and try to not necessarily talk to them about video, but talk to them about them too. Um, because, um, I want them to feel like their personality is important to me for the storytelling. Um, and also it'll make them way more comfortable with you. Um, if you've like opened up to them in the past then they're not like, Oh, this video guy that we've only chatted with once is here filming us and we have to be like all intimate. Um, but yeah, going in and trying to approach each wedding. I mean, you, you have you have your, your similar workflows. Like I know I got to capture the mom putting helping her put the dress on the first look. But like also, don't be afraid to just don't be so worried about the technical stuff because in the end you're preserving memories. So if the thing was shot on an iPhone, that couple is gonna love watching that like moment. Um, even if it wasn't shot with like the best exposure. So like I usually will have a camera in hand, um, always ready to like hit record. So if I'm like, I walk around handheld a lot and I'll just record stuff, even though like I'll get like an hour's worth of footage and I'm like, I'm probably not going to use any of that, but there's usually like little snippets that I can pull out that, um, usually will stand out. Absolutely. That's great, man. Well, thanks for uh, hopping on here. I'm going to stop the recording, but where can people find you anyway, before we sign off here, where can people learn more about you or connect with you? Um, You can go Facebook or Instagram uh, for graphic formation films or my website is graphicformation.com. Okay. Graphic formation. Some people say it's graphic formulas. Some people say it's graphic formations. Um, Just ends with N. So graphic formation. It's a name. I hate, I hate my business name, but I'm too deep to change it. I'm just too deep. Everyone already knows the brand. So maybe we'll rebrand in a couple of years, but, um, I, I like when people, um, have their name as their, um, business because I feel like in a couple of years, um, they're going to be like, I mean, people will know, okay, that's who filmed my wedding, that person's name. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, and there's always the debate, too, um, whether it's your name or not, because then you can't scale, you know? It's it's just like if they hire Ben Libby Films, they expect Ben Libby to come shoot their wedding, you know? like That's true. So there's the the other piece of that is, like, if you want to scale it up or not, or if you can't shoot that day people feel like they're getting a, le- a lackluster product. So you might've actually helped yourself a little bit. Who knows? That is, that is true. I guess if I ever want to hire associates or something, I can do that easier. 
learn your equipment as like much as you can because for me, I finally got to a point where like I haven't had to buy equipment for a while because I've been using the same stuff. So like now I feel like my gimbal is almost like it's just a part of my body now. I feel like I can manipulate it in any way I want and it'll do exactly what I want. Um, I feel like I've been, so I use, I film with the EOS R. I film everything in 1080 and I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can almost use that thing to the best of its ability. I've learned how to expose it exactly how, to the point where I hardly have to do any color grading. Um, and just being able to use your equipment without having to stress about, okay, I don't know how to use this properly. Um, Absolutely. I, I use this little awesome old pocket at weddings. I don't know if you've ever heard of those things. Yep. Um, as like a creative angle. And I probably use one, at least one shot of that in every wedding video. Sure. Um, another tip that you can maybe mention is like, I shoot everything in 1080 besides the drone stuff, but I export everything in 4K. So when people see my videos, they have the option to do 4K. So they're probably thinking, oh, this guy shoots 4K. So they're going to see that and be like, okay, he's got the best quality, even though I'm shooting 1080p. Um, now, I probably wouldn't do that for corporate work because that's seeing, I mean, that's, that's a little more professional. Sure. <laughs> Whereas like with weddings, um, you're preserving these memories and... I feel like if you the fact that you can't see like every single hair strand, they're not going to be like that upset about it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, those are great tips, yeah. though, man. I, I appreciate your time. Like, it sounds like you got a ton of uh, edits that are sitting in the backlog that I'm taking you away from. So I appreciate you taking the time to to hop on and just get to talk a little bit for sure. I'm curious. Do you have any advice on? Um, corporate work it's like me me and a buddy are trying to start like a side business that will allow us to like because like when people come to my website i mean they could inquire about corporate but when they come to my website they're gonna think this guy only shoots weddings sure and we're starting think, a side business for corporate work so that we can kind of get away from weddings so that people can be like, oh here's a business yep. but like we don't know how to value our stuff like we don't know how to be like sorry we can't afford 200 dollars. like how many 200 dollars inquiries are you getting for, like, for corporate videos, it's definitely different. Um, I've gotten to the point now where I don't shoot anything under a thousand dollars and I, yeah. I've ranked my site for different search terms where I'll have people reach out to me. Um, like I had the Kentucky Derby or it's, it's actually the, um, Oh, what's it called? Godolphin is what it's called. It's like a horse racing company out of Saudi Arabia and they're in Kentucky wow. as well. And they were looking for somebody to shoot a interview of one of their horse trainers at um, Prairie Meadows in Altoona. And I, you know, they're, they're like, we just need the footage. We have an editor in Kentucky that'll edit everything. We just need a two camera interview set up with lights and just shoot it. You know, that's all we need. And I'm like, okay, well I don't shoot anything corporate under a thousand dollars. I'm like, Oh, okay. That was what our budget was. It was about a grand. So that works. So it's like for like wow. 45 minutes of work, I come home, throw it up on WeTransfer, Google Drive, and I'm done, you know? So it's like, there's that level. You can put minimums for day rates or whatever, but the way I do my pricing is a lot of times it's value-based. So I'll gauge it based on the value that video is going to bring the client because I knew it was cheaper to pay me a grand than to fly their videography team out from Kentucky, shoot a 45-minute interview, and then fly back. So it's like they could either hire me to do it for cheaper than that, or they send the other guy out. But that's just from asking questions like, and I'll even ask him at the end of my discovery call. I'm like, okay, so what's the ultimatum here that you're going to, you're going to do this that costs thousands or you're going to hire me to do it for a thousand. So it's like that type of thing, like the if or, or type conversation. So people do you do, how many people in the course do you feel like are interested? Is it mostly Iowa? It's or all over it? the world. I have, I have people in like Shanghai, Brazil, uh, Mexico, but a lot of them are in America. So we have a lot of people from like East coast, like New York, I have a couple of people from Canada. Um, there's a couple of from Iowa just cause they know me cause we shoot together and they wanted to get in early. So, um, cool. yeah, we usually add, it's like 10 people a month. Usually I was running ads for it, but since the pandemic, I just had pulled back on it. But a lot of the new students come from my YouTube channel. So well, if you can mix in some business with that wedding stuff, you can really, you can start to hire a team. You can do a lot more stuff with your business yeah. if that's what you're wanting to do. So I feel like if you can get into the right thing, um, just knowing, like you were saying, they paid you what a thousand dollars for 45 minutes. Like 
I mean, I could probably take a day to go do corporate work um, and even outsource the edit if I needed to with sure. money that I had left over. Um, yeah, dude, and I, I've explored a lot of niches. I mean, I've found my, my happiness really stems from doing fitness content because when I started shooting, it was, I had a fitness YouTube channel in college and I just like was doing vlog videos of like what I was eating, like my workouts, stuff like that. So that's how I started into making videos. So yeah. I've, I've dabbled a lot. I've done real estate videos and, uh, you know, weddings. I've done corporate stuff. I work for a huge company that does bigger stuff. So like, I've kind of seen all the different niches. And I think that, like you said, you really have to have a passion for it because I can make money in real estate videos, but you'd have to do high volume and low cost to be competitive. Yeah. So it's like 500 bucks a video, but you do like six of them in a week or whatever to make any money. It's just, that's not what I want my life to be like. <laughs> Um, well, cool. Yeah. I mean, you can just send it to oh, right, um, mm-hmm. graphic formation at gmail.com. Okay. Um, do you guys, do you have like a Facebook page? Yep. You can find everything. It's on solo video pro.com. Um, I've got a free webinar there where I kind of hint at some of the stuff that's in the course, but then, um, there's also a Facebook page. There's an Instagram page. And then we have a private members only Facebook group, which is where you can interact with all the other students in the course. And you can ask questions like talk about, I have like email templates on how to reach out to companies, uh, sales scripts for phone calls, like all that type of stuff. So. Oh, that's cool. I've had different interviewees on just the group itself has some value that might be able to help you with an, if you're trying to get into business stuff or corporate, um, but yeah, I think the, the whole, the whole purpose of it is really to start thinking about business rather than just the creative piece. Like obviously you're really passionate about the telling the stories and capturing memories and doing that stuff, but especially the business side, if we can, sim- if we can simplify that for anybody that's in here, that's the whole point is just to make it a lot easier to understand. So yeah, absolutely. Super cool, man. All right. Well, take it easy. Have a good rest of your night and uh, hey, I'll get you too. added to the course. Feel free to poke around and watch any videos that would be helpful to you. So Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Sure. No worries. All right. We'll see you later. See you, man.